Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is definitely not good at following the law, but even he must follow the laws of the universe. And one that he never violates is the idea that no matter what happens, it can always get worse. Because despite Justin Trudeau's massive unpopularity and the very low polling for the Liberal Party nationally, they somehow keep sinking further and further into unpopularity. So this is the stats from an Abacus data poll that just came out showing that the Conservatives are still nursing a healthy 20-point lead over the Liberals, 43 to 23, with the NDP only at 18 and the Bloc at 7. This is pretty much what many of the more accurate pollsters has been saying over the past four or five months. It's not a trend that's just here for a little bit, but not for a very long time. This is what Canadians actually think. And you can tell because it's not like the polls have been jumping up for the Conservatives and coming back down and jumping back up. No, it's been like consistent. It's been pretty flat with Abacus data showing an anywhere from 16 to 22 point lead for the Conservatives. And yes, they did at one point have a 22 percent lead. That's how bad the Liberals are doing. And the Liberals with Justin Trudeau, let's let's just highlight the regionals because they are definitely scary for the Liberals. The Liberals just don't have a base of support. I've said this before. I'll say it again. Yeah, if you're the Liberal Party, you're playing on easy mode in Canada. You can pretty easily mop up a lot of seats in Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver. But the Liberals have gotten so used to the idea that it's easy to win as a Liberal, they've just decided we can govern however we want. And while that's kind of true if you're a Liberal, when you start hurting the country as much as they have, even Toronto voters start to get a little bit shaky. So yes, they'll still win the majority of seats in Montreal, Toronto, and not quite downtown Vancouver anymore, but that's not enough. They still need another third of their votes to be coming from non-urban GTA areas, and they just don't have that anymore. They are losing Atlantic Canada famously right now. The Conservatives are at 48% in Atlantic Canada, with the Liberals trailing by 29%. That's insane, considering Atlantic Canada went 100% for the Liberals back in 2015. And it's even worse when it comes to age demographics. This is, the Liberals used to be a party for older pensioners, and while they still disproportionately do better with older voters, they are not anywhere close to leading the Conservatives. And it's because when they kept spending massive amounts of money every single year, including this new budget, which is increasing inflation and it's putting people's benefits at risk, those voters flee from you hard. And that's also why the Conservatives are winning women now, when that used to be a historic demographic that the Liberals could rely on, because women tend to like uh, a sort of a policy that's very safe and consistent. And because the Liberals are typically in office way more than the Conservatives, the Liberals are considered the safe default. But Justin Trudeau is actually a very NDP-ish orange Liberal Party leader, and so his constant new benefit programs that fall on their face, increase inflation, his bad policy when it comes to criminal justice, all this stuff has completely alienated women. And like I always say, right now the Liberals at 23% nationally. And when you look at Justin Trudeau's approval rating, he's only at a 25% approval rating. I have never seen the Liberal Party outpace Justin Trudeau's approval rating. His approval rating and their national vote are always within one or two percent. Because if you don't like Justin Trudeau, you're not voting liberal. But I want to highlight something here that's kind of funny, is that not only does Justin Trudeau only have a 25% approval rating, according to this Abacus data poll, but he's literally less popular than the Freedom Convoy and COVID protesters who were like the absolute most demonized group of people over the past three years by the media. So even though these people have been basically hammered at by the media year after year, every single hour of the day, especially when COVID was really big, these people are way more popular than Justin Trudeau is. Because as time has gone on, even though people had a very negative impression of anyone who stood up to lockdowns and mandates, over time, People, as they get out of that COVID era emergency mindset, they're realizing, yeah, that was really dumb. Maybe it was kind of bad to lock people up at home, force them to get vaccinated when they didn't want to and all that and whatnot. So now COVID protesters have a 42% approval rating in terms of people agreeing with their actions with only 51% disagreeing. And yes, it's still a majority who didn't like them. But Canada is very much what I call a middle-class cultured country. 
middle class people, and we're all middle class people watching this video, most likely unless you're super rich or in the in like a rare person who's in the very low kind of uh, income demographic in Canada. Most of us tend to not like to be super loud about politics. We don't like to be loud about our beliefs. So anyone protesting anything tends to get a lot of disapproval by the Canadian public because it's very emotional and Canadians don't like emotional politics very much. It, it's like if you see someone crying in, in front of you, you kind of look away instinctually. It, it's uncomfortable because you can't match their sort of energy. So a lot of Canadians, because they don't get very hot blooded about politics, when they see people protesting, there's an inherent automatic dislike. And the fact that now... 42% of people actually agree with what the COVID uh, protesters were doing is really good progress. But here is another funny thing I want to talk about. And it's the general Canadian public and then Gen uh, X and Z voters impression of Justin Trudeau compared to Pierre Polyev when a bunch of different scenarios are pitched at them. So this is Justin Trudeau versus Pierre Polyev with Gen Z and millennial voters. So the only category in which Justin Trudeau leads Pierre Polyev is if you were to pick someone to host a party, in which I can't blame people. Justin Trudeau seems like he would maybe be a more fun guy compared to Pierre Polyev. I'd probably go to a party Pierre Polyev hosted because I don't like parties. And Pierre Polyev doesn't exactly seem like the party animal type that Justin Trudeau is. And when you go down through these categories, as much as this is just kind of fun, as you go down to more serious sort of life decisions and events, when it says putting up a shelf, Pierre Polyev has a 20-point lead with younger voters over Justin Trudeau. Being in charge of the map for a road trip, Pierre Polyev gets a 24% lead. Putting, on a kitchen, uh, putting out a kitchen counter fire, plus 19 Pierre Polyev. Solving an escape room, plus 18 Pierre Polyev. Negotiating a discount, plus 18 Pierre Polyev. It's because nobody trusts Justin Trudeau to do anything past tying his own shoes. And even then, you don't really trust him that much, but it's his own shoes, so, you know, he can only hurt himself. But Justin Trudeau isn't just not trusted with anything actually serious. And here's another one. I think this is just the public in general, just uh, not just Gen Z and millennials. Again, Justin Trudeau leads with hosting a house party, but on pretty much everything else, it's just it's pure poly of leading by 20 points. And there's some where he only leads by one, but it's stuff like hosting and uh, having an event at a bar or whatever. People just think of Justin Trudeau as someone you would maybe be a friend of, but you don't put that idiot in charge of anything that actually matters. And that's a really bad impression of a leader if you're actually trying to run for public office. The fact that after nine years on the job, Justin Trudeau appears to be someone who's not very serious as a politician is like the death knell of the Liberal Party. The fact that after nine years, people don't see you as somebody who can balance a checkbook, who the people don't see you as somebody who can negotiate a discount or put out a kitchen fire, because truly the Liberal Party's uh, governance of this country has been a nine year house fire. That's telling. The, that voters don't really associate you with being an analytical person. And so, and that's really what shows why Justin Trudeau has such a hyper-progressive base. It's a group of people who don't actually care about political issues in terms of your effectiveness in carrying out your duty as prime minister, balancing the budget, keeping taxes low, keeping programs being delivered efficiently. They just care about power. They care about the right values in government, and they don't care if it messes up the country. These are the people who go around protesting, screaming down with Canada, land back, Canada's a colonial racist state. These are the kind of voters who are sticking with Justin Trudeau. And in time... Because he's been getting very, very unpopular, the funny thing is that Justin Trudeau is making the same mistake that Joe Biden is in the U.S., that he's losing voters on his left flank, so he has to become even more left-wing and compete with Jagmeet Singh more for voters, when it's he's losing all the voters in the middle who are going to go and vote conservative because they were only going to be around the liberals as far as they didn't completely screw up the country. And now that all of the economic data is coming back and people are being smacked in the face with it every single day, they are not happy. Anyways, I just want to quickly look again at the regionals, but it's remarkable 
that in British Columbia, the conservatives only have, almost have 49% of the vote. And I got to urge you guys, if you live in BC, you got to vote for the BC conservatives provincially. That is another domino that needs to fall for pure poly. If he do, does become prime minister to be able to govern effectively, he needs a radical premier like David Eby out of his way. And the fact that 49% of people are voting federal conservative, yet around 42 40% of people are voting BC NDP. I guarantee there are a lot of people saying I'm voting federal conservative, but they're still voting provincial NDP at the moment, or at least they're committing to that. Those people need to be reached and they need to be told that the BC provincial conservatives can actually win. So don't vote for a guy who's going to stymie everything that Pierre Polyev wants to do on a national level. Uh, and then in Ontario, conservatives 43, liberals 28. There's a reason that when you see some of these electoral projections on the map, you're actually starting to see downtown Montreal and downtown Toronto ridings flipping blue because these ridings are actually very divided between the Liberals, NDP, and usually even the Greens can score 8 to 10 points in these ridings. The Conservatives don't actually need that many gains in Toronto in order to be very competitive. It's just been that the Conservatives sit around the low 20s and then the, the Liberals and the NDP are sitting around the higher 30s fighting with each other. So in a lot of these ridings, if the, the Conservatives can gain 10%, they're in the game, and they actually have a solid shot of flipping these areas. Kevin Vaughn, the independent MP, his riding on 338 actually shows that he has like a 5% chance of winning that riding right now, uh, or the Conservatives would if he was the candidate. That's really good, considering Spadina Fort York is a deeply, deeply red, uh, red orange riding. It's basically 80% red or orange. I'm just looking at the 338 numbers right now. Uh, ooh, that's St. Catharines. I don't want that. Come on. For some reason, I keep clicking on Spadina Fort York here. It keeps bringing up St. Catharines. I'm sorry. 338 is messing up. But anyways, I, I think it holds true that right now, even these downtown ridings, like right in the city center core, Christian Freeland's riding could be lost to the conservatives. And it's because... All, all these left-wing voters, it's not even that we're flipping them conservative. A lot of them are also just going to stay home because it's hard to keep showing up and voting for the party that's barely hanging on. Eventually, you're going to let them just fall off the cliff rather than coming to their rescue every year. Anyways, that should be it for me, to, guys, today. I just quickly want to do my normal plug that I, Wyatt Claypool, am running for the Calgary Signal Hill Conservative Party nomination. In a couple days, the riding boundaries are changing, and this is what they're going to look like. So if you live on the west side of Calgary in this federal riding, buy a Conservative Party membership, vote for me in the nomination, and check out my website, wyattclaypool.com. And also, if you want to donate to the TNT Legal Fund, it would really help reduce the burden of cost on us for our legal matter that we're fighting with this Chinese billionaire developer. He's suing us for defamation and still hasn't submitted any evidence showing how we defamed him in over two years. I've just gotten another bill for like $2,000 of legal fees. So being able to donate anything to help me out with that really does reduce the burden of cost. And I can focus more on this show rather than figuring out ways of paying for these ridiculously high legal costs. Because this one case alone in less than two years has basically cost me over $29,000. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time uh, with another video, likely talking with, about Justin Trudeau messing up something else because it's just become a pattern since the budget dropped.